Hello, everyone. My name is Nikolai. And my name is Rüdiger. And we're both members of the Boundary Node team at the Divinity Foundation. Today, we want to talk to you about the Solenoid Milestone, which is all about decentralizing the Internet Computer's edge infrastructure. And in particular, we want to show you how you can route all your API requests directly through the decentralized API Boundary Nodes. But before we get to that, we want to give you a brief overview of the current and the new decentralized edge infrastructure. To access steps on the internet computer, until now you had to go through one of the legacy boundary nodes. You might know them by the domain names ic0.app, icp0.io, and icp-api.io. Now, while the core of the internet computer has been fully decentralized from the get-go, these legacy boundary nodes have been operated by the Definity Foundation. Now, we in the Boundary Node team have been working very hard to change that and came up with the new decentralized edge infrastructures with new decentralized boundary nodes. What does that mean? We split today's boundary nodes, so these legacy boundary nodes, into two components, the API boundary nodes and the HTTP gateways. The API boundary nodes are operated by many different node providers and managed by the NNS. These API boundary nodes take API calls, so query, update calls, status calls, and route them to the right subnet and the right replica. The HTTP gateways can be operated by anyone. Definity will continue operating their HTTP gateways, and all they do is allowing direct browser access to your canisters. So they translate HTTP requests into IC API requests. In this demo today, we'll focus on the API boundary nodes. Now, a very nice thing of the centralized boundary nodes is that they were all behind one load balancer. So you could just send your request to ic0.app and you did not have to worry about how many boundary nodes there are, where they are located, and whether they're healthy and ready to serve your request. You just handed off your request and it would reach its destination. Now with the API boundary nodes, this is a little bit different. Each API boundary node is operated by a different node provider. It has its own domain name. And so you need to first, if you want to interact with them, you need to first discover them. So find where they are, what are their domain names. And then you need to somehow decide to which of those API boundary nodes you will send your request. You could, for example, just randomly pick one. You could do some health checks and only pick among the healthy ones, or you could do something more sophisticated, like checking the health and latencies, such that you always choose an API boundary node that is close to you, which will give you a better user experience. Now, this might all sound a bit scary and complicated, but don't worry. We have developed tooling around that and integrated it directly into Agent RS, and this tooling takes care of it for you. And this is what Nikolai will show you in the following demos. I will guide you through the series of four short self-contained demos where we will explore the API boundary nodes landscape. We will route traffic through these API boundary nodes manually and finally explore the dynamic routing capability, which is the main point of this demo. So here we are in the Visual Studio Code editor with a minimal Rust program to talk to the internet computer. We instantiate agent instance, which is a standard component to talk to the internet computer. We provide a routing URL, which is ic0.app, and it means we will uh, do the request via centralized boundary nodes. And we will do a read state call to fetch all existing API boundary nodes from the state tree. Let's take this for a spin. As you can see, the request was indeed routed through ic0.app, meaning through centralized entities. And in response, we got 20 existing API boundary nodes, which are now part of the IC ecosystem. They all have their unique the name, domain names, IPv6 addresses, and optional IPv4 addresses, which are also set for all of them. 
So now we can do the same exercise as we did just now, but route requests through one of the API boundary nodes directly, meaning we will bypass all the legacy boundary node infrastructure. The second demo looks almost identical. Instead, for the URL, we use now one of the API boundary nodes, which we just fetched before, and we can run the same demo. As we can see, now request is routed through one of the API boundary nodes. We get the same response, of course, 20 existing API boundary nodes, and now we completely bypass the centralized architecture. Now, although routing traffic through API boundary nodes manually is possible, it's not convenient. API boundary nodes can be added and removed from the IC ecosystem. Their health condition is subject for change and their latency can vary strongly. That's why we provide you with a very helpful and useful extension in the IC agent, which allows you to do dynamic routing via API boundary nodes. In a nutshell, uh, there are two additional background services which are running in the IC agent. One of them is responsible for discovering existing API boundary nodes, periodically fetches the current topology, and the other service is doing health checks of all discovered API boundary nodes. Combined together, they form a dynamic routing table, which is then used for routing requests. And this dynamic routing table can implement different strategies. For example, it can be latency-based or simple round-robin strategy or any other custom strategy. Let's dive into the next demo. So here we will again talk to the internet computer with the agent, but now we will use the dynamic routing service which is running in the background. And note here we have a call with background dynamic routing, which internally is doing all this magic of discovering and pinging the nodes to check their latencies. We still need to provide a seed node to bootstrap the discovery service, but all the rest remains very simple and identical to the previous use cases. Now, in this demo, I will perform 100 requests, same as I did before to fetch all existing API boundary nodes, and let's see how it's gonna perform. As you can see, now requests are routed through different URLs, and those URLs are chosen randomly, but with some weight distribution according to the latencies. As you can see, we can route requests through many API boundary nodes now. Now, this is a very convenient and ergonomic approach to use IC agent, but we of course wanted to provide users with the capability to use a fully customized approach. So how does it work? Here, we could create an agent as we did before, but now with Arc Route Provider argument. And Route Provider is the core service which is doing this discovery and health checking services in the background. So we could instantiate this Route Provider instance by providing seed API nodes, routing strategy, which I will talk in a moment, and some custom HTTP client. A routing strategy can be chosen according to some specific needs. For example, it can be the latency-based routing. In one of the implementations which we provide, we use dynamic weighted round-robin sampling, means that nodes which have smaller latencies are preferred. In addition, you can fully customize how often health checks are made and how often the nodes are being rediscovered. For the sake of this demo, I will run generate 2000 URLs just from this route provider service, and we will look at some statistics. As you can see, all 20 
API boundary nodes were used in the routing, but they vary strongly in statistics. For example, the node which is closer to me was used much more frequently than some other nodes. And this is because of the specified latency-based routing, which chooses nodes which are closer. In addition, it also penalizes the nodes if they become unavailable over a certain period of time. Now, we hope that this extension to the IC agent will make your experience with the API boundary nodes smooth and convenient. Decentralized API boundary nodes are now available in the IC ecosystem. You can use them. You can use our services, which will help you with dynamic routing via those API boundary nodes. Have fun building new dApps and see you soon. Bye.